Hello, Internet, and welcome to the first episode of History Sleuth, a series where we travel back in time to solve mysteries that have often been forgotten or lost in the flow of time and uncover new details that were originally overlooked. In today's episode, we will be looking at the life of Frank Lenz, an American who set out to circle the globe via bicycle in 1892, but vanished along the way. Stay tuned to learn about his incredible journey as we uncover the facts of his mysterious disappearance. Frank Lenz was born in 1867 in Philadelphia to Adam Reinhardt and Anna Maria Reinhardt, immigrants from Germany. His father died while he was still a child, and Anna Maria moved to Pittsburgh. When Frank was six years old, his mother married William Lenz, another German immigrant. A few years later, the sport of high wheel riding was introduced to the United States from England. It was considered an elitist, fringe sport, and American cyclists were predominantly wealthy young men brave enough to mount high wheelers, which were bikes with a large front wheel and a tiny rear wheel. Frank Lenz was born with adventure in his blood, and at 17 years old, he took up the hobby of cycling. After receiving his first bicycle as a gift, Lenz rode it faithfully and eventually joined and took trips with the Allegheny Cyclers, a local cycling club, through the nearby trails and roads in Pennsylvania. As his passion for cycling continued to grow, he started to venture out on long-distance rides across the United States. In 1890, he rode from his hometown of Pittsburgh to St. Louis, and in 1891 he rode from Pittsburgh to New Orleans. In 1892, Lenz decided his job as an accountant was too mundane, so he quit it to pursue his passion for cycling. The Englishman Thomas Stevens had completed the first circumnavigation of the globe by bicycle in 1887, and Lenz wanted to make an attempt of his own. He reached out to Outing Magazine and they arranged a deal with him that in exchange for pictures and stories from his ride, they would sponsor his excursion. Not only would this trip provide him with his desired adventure, but Lenz believed it would help promote the new Safety Bicycle, which was a development similar to present day bikes with pneumatic tires, during a time where the appeal of cycling was quickly growing. He set out from the Smithfield Street Bridge in Pittsburgh on a Victory Safety Bicycle on May 15, 1892, with 800 onlookers wishing him well. Going first to Washington, D.C., he then traveled west across the United States and parts of Canada, reaching San Francisco on October 20th. From San Francisco, he sailed to Japan, where he rode from Yokohama to Nagasaki before crossing to China. While Lenz enjoyed his trip through Japan, which he praised in his reports, China proved a tougher stage of his journey. Whereas Japan had good roads to bike on, the roads in China were in poor condition, and the fact that it was winter made biking conditions even worse. While many of the locals curiously watched Lenz pass through, he also encountered many people that were hostile or fearful. He had expected to cross China in three months, but it took him six, and he was happy when he finally reached Burma, which was part of the British Empire. It's now known as Myanmar. The jungles of Burma proved another difficult obstacle, with heavy rain and almost impassable roads. He also contracted malaria while he was there, which slowed him down significantly. Reaching Rangoon, now Yangon, he found it impossible to ride his bike the next stage of the journey, and instead crossed by ship to Calcutta, now Kolkata. In early October 1893, he left Calcutta and spent the next month crossing to Lahore. From Lahore, he decided to travel south to Karachi, and then by steamer to Bureshire in Persia, riding north to Tehran from there. He found Tehran a wonderful place and was hesitant to leave, but he set out for Tabri in April of 1894, hoping to reach Constantinople, now in simple, before the worst of the summer heat. In early May 1894, almost two years after his departure from Pittsburgh, he set off from Tabri on the next stage of his journey, with Erzurum as his next objective. He was never heard from again. When Outing Magazine lost contact with Lenz, and nothing was heard from him throughout the summer, his family started to worry that something bad had happened. 
There are currently several theories floating around about what could have happened to Frank Lenz. One theory is that he loved Turkey so much that he went undercover using a new identity and started a new life there, but this theory seems highly unlikely. He had a good relationship with his family, so had he decided to live out the remainder of his life in Turkey, he had no reason to keep them in the dark about it and no reason to claim a different identity. No, unfortunately the fate of Frank Lenz is much grimmer, as there is no doubt that he died in 1894. Another theory suggests that Lenz may have died an accidental death. We know that he had to cross several rivers after he entered Turkey and was heading to Erzurum, and at this time of year the currents were at their strongest. We also know he was in a weakened state because he had gone through several long bouts of sickness, so it is entirely possible that during one of several storms that occurred during the time he was there that he managed to fall into a river and drown. But there is no evidence to support this. Surely his body, bike, or gear would have turned up washed ashore somewhere had this been the case. As it turns out, the Ottoman Empire was at this time going through a period of turmoil. The ongoing Hamidian massacres were killing tens of thousands of Armenians, and it is likely that Lenz was murdered by Kurdish bandits. Alexander Terrell, the US minister to Turkey, felt sure that it was the Kurdish bandits that killed him, as the Kurds had a reputation for being a tough lot that would attack foreigners along the caravan road. Outing Magazine eventually sent another famous bicyclist, William Sachtelben, to Turkey to investigate the circumstances of Lenz's disappearance. Sachtelben had completed his own bike journey around the world in 1892. He sailed to Europe in March of 1895 and traveled to Erzurum, having to forge papers to gain entrance to Kurdistan. In Erzurum, Sakdalben learned that Lenz had somehow insulted a notorious Kurdish chief when passing through a small village. The Kurds then apparently ambushed and killed him, burying his body on the bank of a river. The Kurd Musto Nise ended up taking the blame, and he was charged and convicted by the Turkish authorities, but he was able to flee before going to prison. There certainly was some evidence that Lenz was attacked just outside the town where Musto lived, where bits and pieces of Lenz's camera and gear were found. So, it would appear that this case is closed, but was Musto really the killer? With Lenz's body and bike never being found, and authorities unable to question Musto due to his escape, it's impossible to know for sure. Musto was a dishonorable man who was certainly capable of killing Lenz, but you could argue that that was the reason the Armenians were so keen on pinning a murder on him, to get him out of town. While his quest was ill-fated, Frank Lenz left a lasting impact on the world of cycling and inspired many with his adventurous spirit. His partial journey around the world changed him in many ways and gave him a new outlook on life. While he originally set out to promote the new safety bicycle and seek adventure and fame, he seems to have found a higher mission along the way. He talked about how it would prove that there is a fraternal feeling among the human race, and that with civilization comes tolerance, and a more sympathetic appreciation of fellow men among all nations. Thank you all for watching the first episode of History Sleuth. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell to stay up to date on all the cases I will be attempting to solve. If there are any other historical mysteries you would like me to investigate, please let me know in the comments below.